This is January 17th, 2019, meeting of the Northampton City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the council <coughs> president, so I'll be presiding. These proceedings are all being audio and video recorded. You can see up there your friends and neighbors from across the city are, are watching as we conduct uh, the business of the city. And we'll start with public comment. And this is the regular period we have where people can say uh, whatever they want in any subject. Two rules, please, if you would keep your comments to three minutes or less. Um, if you go beyond that, I will, in a very gentle and friendly way, urge you to, um, to stop. And the second thing to remember is we don't have a back and forth. It's your time to give your opinion to us. And the reason is to make sure everyone has equal time and is heard fairly. So I have a sign-up sheet, and I'll go through that, and then whoever has not signed up is welcome to speak afterwards. So the first person is, is Al Griggs. Mr. Griggs, if you would give your name and address for the record, please, and the floor is yours. Thank you, President O'Donnell. My name is Al Griggs. I live at Nine Barrett Place in Northampton. And I'm here to, this evening to express my support for Chief Jody Casper at the Police Department in Northampton. I want to express my objection to the use of terms such as violence workers and the anti-police rhetoric that has accompanied the Walmart ammunition donation discussion. I want to express my disbelief when I heard this utopian suggestion to abandon the police department. I want to express my sincere disappointment with the city council for the lack of expressed support for the chief and the women and men who work in the police department. As the legislative body of our city government, the council has the responsibility for the fiscal health of our city. That includes the passage of an annual budget, and within that budget is the budget of the police department. The city council also has the responsibility to approve appointments to heads of city departments made by the mayor. That includes the chief of police. The city council has a high degree of oversight over the police department. The council effectively delegates to the chief the responsibility to carry out the mission of the police department. I look forward to the time in the very near future, I hope, when the council with, will signal its respect and appreciation for the work the chief and her department are doing. I look forward to again seeing evidence that the council, the mayor, and the police department are working cooperatively with a shared vision for the future of our community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grace. Um, Sally Griggs, if you would please. Good evening. My name is Sally Griggs. I live at Nine Barrett Place in Northampton. And first of all, I would like to agree with all of my husband's comments. I don't need to repeat them. But I would also like to add support for Walmart. Our trendy, artsy city needs a place to buy the basics at a reasonable price. Walmart's is an important part of the kaleidoscope that makes Northampton so special. And the suggestion that their donation was rejected because of a possible tax break is appalling to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Griggs. Um, is there anyone else who would like to provide public comment on any issue who has not signed up? You're welcome to. Okay. Um, hearing none, we'll convene, and I'll ask for a roll of the <coughs> council. Here. Present. Here. Here. Present. Here. 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 Okay. We're all here, as you heard. Uh, a quick kind of technical update. Um, the open meeting law requires public bodies to regularly review minutes of executive session me uh, meetings um, to determine if they may be disclosed. The executive session minutes of February 16th, 2017, I'm hereby announcing, have been reviewed and has been determined that uh, because of ongoing collective bargaining and pending legal action, non-disclosure is still warranted. So I've made that uh, announcement for the record. Do other members <coughs> of the council have uh, any announcements this evening? No? Oh, Councilor Bidwell. Um, yes, actually on the, on the, on the topic of, of police. The police department's uh, Citizen Police Academy uh, will begin let me be sure I've got it. Uh, they will start the first of their seven-week sessions on Thursday, February 7th. It will be for seven weeks in a row from 6 to 9. 
and I'll just read the department's own description of it. It's designed to enhance citizen understanding of the role and function of the police department. It's an opportunity for community members to better understand the inner workings of the police department and to meet the talented and professional women and men of the Northampton Police Department. I encourage folks to attend the Citizens Police Academy. It's very worthwhile. Okay. Thank you for that announcement. Others, any other announcements? No? Uh, Mr. Mr. Mayor? Hey, you. <laughs> oh, right. Do you have any announcements? Actually, I did have an announcement. I said, hey, you, out of respect, because he was <laughs> Totally <out> understood. <laughs> My apologies. No, um, not at all. Uh, so I actually just had one uh, quick announcement to make, and it's sort of a late-breaking um, grant announcement um, that the uh, city received word today uh, that we received a $120,000 land grant uh, from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, and you may recall... Uh, actually in Councilor LaBarge's ward, the Willard Gravel Pit property, uh, where we were applying for funding to purchase some of the conservation and open space land um, on that property. Uh, sort of parts of it are being redeveloped for a uh, marijuana cultivation uh, site, and then another portion of it is being uh, developed for solar, and then there was sort of another par portion of it. So we did receive word today from the Commonwealth that we received that grant. So I thought it was worth sharing uh, with the council tonight, and um, and I know the uh, Planning and Sustainability Director will be working on that land acquisition process, but um, it's good news for the city that we have funds to support that. Definitely, and congratulations. Thank you for yes. seeing that through. Excellent news. Good. Um, very good. And so we have an unusual feature in our agenda this evening. We are going to recess the City Council and ask the Committee on City Services to convene within the Council to conduct some business. So I'll turn it over to the <coughs> Chief, Councilor Carney. Thank you, Councilor. Um, would you call the roll, please? Councilor Present. <coughs> Present. Here. Here. Okay. I uh, don't believe there's any particular public comment for this uh, little recess meeting, and it is unusual, as the president noted. But because we had a couple of um, appointments that came within within the five days of our meeting, we couldn't take them up at our city services, and we don't want to stand in the way of moving forward with the Charter Review Committee. So we're having this little recess to basically do the same process that we did at our previous city services meeting. And I'll just explain that for this, this was an unusual set of appointments because they came with a particular <coughs> piece of legislation uh, that required that each of the um, uh, nominees to the Charter Review Committee be recommended or um, offered with consultation with the ward counselor. So in that respect, as a committee, we decided they had been already vetted and forwarded to us and decided to defer to the respective ward counselors that sent those names. And so in this case here, we also have one final uh, appointee that comes recommended from the mayor's office in consultation with Ward 3. Jim Nash, and then the uh, final appointee is from the mayor's, the, it's actually the mayor's chief of staff, Lynn, Lynn Timmons. So I'll ask members of the committee if they would offer a recommendation of these appointees. I'd make a full recommendation um, to appoint to the Charter Review Committee, um, Dylan Daphne and Lynn Simmons. Second. Okay, moved and seconded to send with a positive recommendation to full city council the names of Dylan Gaffney and Lynn Simmons to the Charter Review Committee. All in favor? Aye. 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 No abstentions or oppositions. Then that motion carries. That concludes our business. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And we are adjourned. And okay. forward. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair, for, for doing that. Um, the next item for the full city council will be the consent agenda. I will read the items that are contained in the consent agenda. At anyone's request, we will remove them for a separate vote. Otherwise, there will be no discussion on the following items. First, uh, the minutes of January 3rd, 2019. Um, next, the uh, appointments of the Charter Review Committee, uh, which have all received positive recommendations from the Committee on City Services. Um, and if I mispronounce names, you'll <coughs> chalk it up to, you know, youthful um, naivete. Um, the first is Robert uh, Bolris of 127 Hinckley Street. Um, that's the Ward 5 appointee. 
The next is Sam Hopper of 257 South Street. That's the Ward 4 appointee. Also, Stanley Moulton of 34 Perkins Avenue. Uh, it's the Ward 1 appointee. Roberta Sullivan of 83 Maynard Road, uh, Ward 2. Patricia Healy of 21 Longfellow Drive, Ward 6. And Molly Fox, um, 24 Water Street in Ward 7. And also, as we just heard about, Dylan Gaffney of 23 Marshall Street, that's Ward 3. And finally, Lynn Simmons, the mayor's appointee to the committee. Um, so those are all t for the Charter Review Committee. And finally, the consent agenda contains the following, which will be the equivalent of referral to the, that committee for later consideration. And those referrals are Freeman Stein of 27 Fairfield Avenue, and these are appointments to, um, that's an appointment to the Arts Council. And secondly, referral of Pauline Fogel of 16 Forbes Avenue to the Central Business Architecture Committee. Move approval of the Second. consent agenda, please. Okay. All those in favor of the consent agenda, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions. <coughs> so all of that is approved. Now we'll <coughs> recess again. And this time go to finance. Excellent. Um, would you call the roll of finance, please? Councilor Here. <coughs> Present. Present. <coughs> Here. Excellent. First item is approval of minutes of our meeting on January 3rd. Do we have a motion? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Um, then the next item we have, we have the finance director here tonight, and she's going to give us the second quarter financial report for FY 2019. Okay. Thanks. So you all should have gotten um, four documents um, that have the revenues and expenditures for the general fund and revenues and expenditures for the four enterprise funds. So I'll start with the revenues for the general fund. Um, some of the things that I'll highlight is that our hotel motel tax is 4.6% above this quarter last year, so that's a good sign. Um, if you look at the revenues and um, the first section taxes and excise, you can also see that we've had some tax title payoffs. So we've had $80,963 come in in tax titles. Those are um, uh, properties that um, the city was starting the process of taking in. Those uh, owners have paid up. So um, there's that. And then if you look below in that section under the pilots, um, the reason there are no revenues yet collected is we don't usually build the pilots until after we've set the tax rate, and we set the tax rate in November. So those bills have gone out, and those monies will be coming in. Um, if you look in the next section, which is charges for services, which is mainly the parking revenues and ambulance revenues, you can see that um, ambulance revenues um, at the mid-year point are 950000 um, which is great. Um, last year, <coughs> we brought in about $1.8 so we're on track this year to bring in the same amount. Um, for parking revenues, um, I've distributed them among more line items. I think the question came up last time why the way we distributed them. We've gone to the credit cards and the mobile app, so I've created um, revenue lines for those so that we can track them separately. And if you look at that, if you look at the two that are the um, credit card kiosk and the mobile app revenue, um, those are actually the use of those is continuing to climb. So overall, parking revenue is right where I thought. It's just um, somewhat distributed differently among the line items because more and more people are using the credit cards. Um, if you look at the next section, um, which is also called charges for services, there's nothing in there that um, is out of the ordinary. That The biggest thing in that um, section is the tuition for Smith Folk, and that is just billed on a uh, quarterly basis. And then if you look at the next section down, uh, licenses and permits, again, this is a section that is very um, driven by what's happening in the local economy. So if you look at the building inspector line, you can see that um, already this year, um, the building inspector's line has brought in 352000 in permit revenue, which is 91% of what we projected. So uh -huh. they are way ahead of schedule, which means that there is a lot of building, which then ultimately translates into new growth. So those are good you know, numbers to see that they're up. So building inspection, wiring inspections also up. 
Um, the rest of the revenues are right where we would anticipate um, them to be. Uh, so by, you know, if you look at the very last page, we're at 6% halfway through the year. Um, but the percentage there doesn't mean as much because there's some big payments that only come in at the end of the year. So the percentage on that line isn't necessarily as telling as the percentages on some other lines. If you go to the general fund expenditures, um, there's really nothing that I would highlight um, to inform you as you're looking at it. I give it to you in a breakout of PS, which is salaries versus operating for each department. So the thing that I'm looking at for the PS is, is the PS halfway through the year 50% or less? And for most of the departments it is. Some departments it is lower because they have some vacancies. A uh, few departments it's higher, like rec and senior services, but that's because some of their salaries at the end of the year get moved out of um, some of their revolving funds. So we fund them in the budget and then we, we square it up at the end of the year. So as you look at the percentages, there were no percentages that had any concerns for me. I will start doing a uh, bi-weekly payroll tracking um, after um, starting in February where I look at every department's budget and project out where they're going to end just in case they're going to need a transfer. So that's the general fund. Um, the enterprise fund, again, has no um, nothing of concern. It looks pretty good. If you look at the enterprise fund revenues, um, what I tend to look at there is the rates. Um, so if you look at sewer, sewer rates, we've brought in halfway through the year, we're at 50% of our projection. Um, water rates, we're at 49.1. Stormwater, we're at 50%. And uh, solid waste for landfill stickers, we're at 73%, which tells me that people are buying ahead. Um, but in general, the rates, I want to make sure that we're, you know, halfway through the year, we've got half of the revenue that we're anticipating and we're pretty much on track. In terms of expenditures for the rev for the enterprise funds, again, if you look at the percentages, they really don't tell you a lot on these because if you look at the first column, it's the appropriation for the enterprise fund. The second column is transfers and adjustments. That's basically multi-year capital projects that are carried forward um, that are being spent as the projects are being done. So it kind of brings down the overall expenditure so when it, you look at, say, sewer and you see only 30% is expended, well, that's because 4.6 of it is tied up in some long-term projects. So um, the percentages are not as meaningful on this report, um, but in general, the expenditures for the enterprise funds are on track with other years. So really, really not a lot to say, um, but I do think that the, you know, the best thing is that we see the building inspector bringing in a lot of revenue, which, as I said, translates to new growth. Um, one thing I do want to address is um, hotel, motel, and meals revenue. When you see the numbers, um, the payment that we get in December is actually for what happened in August, September, and October. And that will be the same when we start getting the uh, marijuana revenue. So um, what happens is when we get a payment in December, if you back it up, that's what happened in Northampton in August, September, and October. Then the entities, the, the hotels, the restaurants, or, or the marijuana facility, have the month of November to file their taxes, and then the state distributes our share in December. So we are always a couple of months behind. So the quarterly payment that we got in December has no marijuana revenues in it. The first payment we will see from the recreation or uh, adult use marijuana will be at the end of March. We'll get that payment for the quarter that ends March 31st. Um, we'll get that payment the first week of April, and that will reflect what happened in November, December, and January. So I know there's been a lot of speculation about what that number will look like, and I'm not going to give you any idea. So. <laughs> okay. Any questions uh, for the finance director? Counselor. So thank you, first of all. I, excellent, as always. So therefore, you wouldn't be contemplating marijuana revenue really um, significantly as you put together a budget because you just have not 
you really have no idea what to expect. No, when it, the first week of April, when we get the first number again, yeah. we all know it was the fir one of the first to open. So whatever right. that number is, right. it's not yeah, a it'll number be. that we're going to be able yeah. to say is going to be a consistent, yeah, yeah, okay, uh, true number. So I think you know it's going to take about a year of revenues for mm -hmm. us to really Level get a solid out. handle on what what mm -hmm. that's going to how much that's going to contribute to the to our base. So. And there was a fee, if I if I may, there was a fee, a host community fee, and I guess you uh, we we plan for a quarter of a million dollars, and it's under that, it's like two hundred thousand according to this. Was well, that just a? Well, we have we have um, a host community fee for with Netta for the medical marijuana, and that is a five-year agreement, I believe, and um, or or and and so we. Anticipated, I think, 200,000 this year, 200 or 250. I can't remember. Um, 250. And so then there will be the the, the tax from the uh, adult use marijuana, and then there will also be a host community fee from the adult use marijuana as well. And that too is would not be reflected until until later. The, the host right. community fee uh, right. for the switch over from medical to commercial. Do you want to address it? Yeah, I mean, the, the question <laughs> is that. Um, we're unclear. We were actually talking about this earlier. We um, most likely will not show the host community um, agreement funds as a revenue, um, only because it's a it has a five year lifespan and then it goes away. Um, so we're debating how we will treat that, mm -hmm. um, only because you wouldn't want to build that in as a revenue that is recurring every year and then it goes away. So we're trying to think of a way that we would um, how we would treat that. Um, because then year six, you suddenly have a sure. quarter of a million dollar hole in your in your revenue. So um, we're we're thinking about how we'll handle that. Okay. Um, but that's a very finite thing that's separate from the tax <coughs> the general revenue. Definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Thank you. And the tax we know will continue. So. And the host community fee though would potentially apply to anyone else that opens. That is correct. So Together. you could grow as more that outlets open. Yep, that is correct. Okay. So. Councilor uh, Dwight, did you have a? Well, that actually was going to be my question, but I also have another question relative to the recent review of positions and salaries and, the <clears throat> and how you guys figure or anticipate that will figure. I assume it comes after collective bargaining be the, the more um, clearer set. Because that is a matter that's in under collective bargaining right now. I'd rather discuss no, I, okay. with the council in, um, in executive. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I expect we'll probably be having one of those soon enough. In the yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> Any uh, other questions for the mayor, the finance director, on the quarterly report? Hearing none, we'll move on to the other items in finance then. <clears throat> the next one is Order 18224, in order to appropriate $10,000 for the emergency demolition of 45 Carolyn Street. Order that the sum of $10,000 be and hereby is appropriated to the emergency demolition account from free cash to demolish or make safe the fire damage structure at 45 Carolyn Street in accordance with Mass State Building Code um, CMR 780, Chapter 1, Section 1164, and pursuant to the recovery provisions of Mass General Law 139, Subsection 3A, in accordance with Chapter 2 of the Sanitary Code CMR 105. Uh, section 410. Do we have a motion to finance? Make a motion. Second? Second. And this is for the unfortunate fire? That's correct. Unfortunately, as you know, we had a, a, f a fatal fire at 45 Carolyn Street, and the um, building commissioner uh, actually invoked several sections of Mass General Law <coughs> to secure the property um, and may have to do additional, uh, you know, uh, securing up into possibly demol demolition, but but had to make major securing and uh, walls were, were burnt out, et cetera. Um, and so uh, we are essentially asking for this uh, emergency appropriation, which will go into a fund to be used to, to pay for those expenses. Um, and then under Mass General Law, the, um, the property will be uh, essentially leaned uh, to recover those expenses uh, later in the process. Um, for some who have been on the council in the past, we've most recently had to do this when there were fires at the former uh, Northampton Honda uh, facility on King Street. Um, there was an arson fire there, and we had to do a similar procedure. Um, we've also had to do them in some extreme cases um, 
of hoarding and, and other cases like that where we've had to go in and actually take a corrective action. So uh, we're seeking two readings from you tonight Get because going. we've had to make, make some of these repairs already. Um, but again, um, this these funds will be uh, leaned against the property. Ultimately, in whatever insurance or other uh, settlement occurs, uh, the city will be made whole. And this is all in accordance with uh, you know, the building commissioner's uh, laws that, that he acts under. And that's a pretty tight neighborhood, so it would be nice to get it cleaned up and safe for the other residents. So yes. it's a responsible thing to do. Any questions for the mayor on this one? Mm -hmm. Carry on, then. All in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> Thank you. The next thing, the next one is 18225. It's an order to authorize roundhouse parking lot fee and easement acquisition and sale. Whereas the 2016 17, 17 expansion of Pulaski Park Overlook reduced the parking on the northerly side of the roundhouse parking lot, creating a need to expand the parking lot on the southerly side. And whereas purchasing on the plans, we have parcel A, B, C, and D shown in the survey entitled Plan of Land in Northampton prepared. For time bond Inc. signed by Daniel Stats, uh, Northeast Survey Consultants, dated June 15, 2017, recorded in the Hampshire County Registry of Deeds Plan Book 241, page 38, and related easements will allow for said parking lot expansion and rail trail relocation. And whereas granting a, an access easement across the south side of the roundhouse parking lot can spur additional downtown economic development and housing activities order that the mayor is authorized to purchase or otherwise acquire for parking lot and rail trail purposes a fee interest in parcel a which is 2362 square feet with related slope and construction easements uh, up to nineteen thousand dollars and a fee interest in parcel b 430 square feet with related slope and construction easements for up to five thousand dollars and a fee interest in parcel C, 891 square feet with related slope and construction easements for up to $8,000 and a fee interest in parcel uh, in, in interest in parcel D, 105 square feet with related slope and construction easements for up to $1,000. Further, the mayor is authorized to grant a single shared access easement from the roundhouse parking lot to the land to the south side at an amount not less than that determined by an appraisal with such terms and conditions the mayor deems reasonable, with such easement being surplus to the city needs. Do we have a motion of finance? Motion. Second. Second. Okay, and uh, we got our maps, and the mayor can explain to us yes, what's up. And I'll sort of introduce it, and then I'll have Mr. Fine come up and discuss the individual uh, parcels. He's been doing the um, on the ground uh, discussions with property owners. So in the FY18, FY22 capital improvement program, um, uh, you approved a project uh, that was sort of a follow-on. I sort of called it the unofficial phase three of Pulaski Park. As you know, when we constructed the overlook at Pulaski Park, um, we made a decision to remove a significant amount of uh, uh, parking um, where the overlook <coughs> was eventually placed. But the plan was to then try to go back and uh, look at the existing roundhouse, roundhouse lot um, and try to do a redesign of that lot to uh, to try to make up for that parking. Um, so we did engage uh, Ty and Bond uh, to begin the design work on the lot, including how we would reconfigure the parking, how we would uh, reroute the bike trail that currently <coughs> runs through Pulaski Park. Um, and so the, uh, as part of that, um, there, these land acquisitions uh, would allow us to have the space that we need to, to essentially increase the overall parking um, by about 55 uh, spaces. Um, uh, and so I'll have Mr. Fiden uh, come up and actually sh describe the plan and describe the individual parcels. Um, and I believe he also handed you a possibly a design of what the final parking lot will look like. Um, if you know the parking lot now, you know that at the far edge of the parking lot is where the bike trail, you know, snakes around and goes under the Mill River, uh, under the South Street Bridge, rather, um, and continues on its way to Veterans Field. Essentially, this would move closer to the tree line, and then there'd be additional parking uh, spaces that could be created as well. Um, I will say that the long-term um, uh, plan for this, which is also part of the design process that we're undergoing with Tie and Bond, and we're also working with DPW and with Columbia Gas, is to construct a solar canopy um, over this lot. Um, we've done some analysis, and it has a, a really um, 
great potential for a solar canopy project, which you've probably seen at UMass, and we're working on some at some of our other facilities, but that is the ultimate um, goal of this. So we will be incorporating it to the design and hopefully the ultimate uh, um, project, um, uh, the potential for a, a solar canopy to be um, to be built over it. So it will also um, be a, an improved parking uh, lot, but also um, a renewable energy project for the city as well. So I'll turn it over to Mr. Fiden to answer specific questions you may have about the parcels, and he can speak about each individual. So good evening. So just to be clear, just to be clear, we do not have agreements with any of the sellers yet for the property. We're asking you for authority so we can go ahead and sign and, and buy the property. Um, and so we're in discussions. There's four different property owners. We're in discussions for all of them. This is obviously in an urban area where very, amount of, very little amount of space makes a difference. But the entire acquisition we're talking about is less than a tenth of an acre. So we're not talking about a lot of land. It's just downtown every square foot counts in the process. Laura, can you go to the next image after this one? So as the mayor said, you can sort of, and this one, the shaded area is what we're talking about. So the gaining 55 parking spots makes up for the spaces lost the Pulaski Park expansion. Some of the spaces, but only about a quarter of them, actually would actually be on this land we're buying. The land we're buying is critical both for those you know, 14 or 15 spaces, but it lets us reconfigure the entire parking lot. It lets us expand down. So in some ways, all those darker black lines north of the gray area, we're getting a lot, you know, more efficient use of the parking lot than we have now. Um, so the, the, the gray areas the land would be acquiring, the biggest property owner is the housing authority, uh, and then three much smaller properties. Um, that let us do this. And so we would slide the bike path basically right to the southern part of the property, which is more or less what it is now, so we don't have cars crossing the bike path. And then we reconfigure the existing lot and then add a whole new row of parking to the south. And this is just basically undeveloped land at this point. That's correct. There's nothing there. We're not displacing anyone or anything. That's correct. So Literally 20 years ago, we had a, did a detailed hazardous waste assessment of the old Mill River. And the thinking at the time was, could we restore the entire Mill River through downtown? And it was in that process that we discovered what became an $8 million liability for Columbia Gas, and they did $8 million of cleanup for Roundhouse Parking Lot. And what they've done is they've cleaned up the site so it's perfectly safe. You can wander there. You could build buildings there. But there's still, below 17 feet, there's still some product underground. So it means we're never going to restore the Mill River in this section. We may restore it in other areas. But so the <coughs> land that we've sort of not been touching because of that, it's not going to be a restored river. It, it would be opening it up to waste. And so that's, it was, you know, it was sort of a, it was a homeless encampment for a while. It's where we put snow. It's sort of a, a leftover spot. Yeah. Questions for uh um, so it looks so they're existing rows essentially we're just sort of extending the rows of parking that are there down farther and then there's going to be this other set that are kind of nose in parking maybe that's correct yeah um, which is sort of similar we have now on the south side of the parking lot so we're right. basically sliding everything down we're adding new parking and we're actually narrowing just very slightly the drive aisle because it's right. a very wide it's drive very wide um, so as you know, I'd heard some concern from someone who felt like this was really paving over this urban forest area. When looking at, you know, these, looking at this, so it looks like there really isn't, aren't that many trees that are going to be removed and sort of this area that's more densely forested is not being touched. It's just sort of this bit along the edge. Do you have any idea roughly like how many trees yeah. or so how much is on yeah. our property? There are some trees that are going to come down anyway. And then that property to the south that you're talking about that's heavily wooded, that's privately owned. And it's probably going to be developed at some point. I'm sure they'll save some trees. But we don't really control that. That's going to be developed right. or not. In the area we're talking about, the long, thin property on the right that looks like the Housing Authority property, right. there are two trees that are on our property, a gorgeous uh, sycamore tree, although it's not that healthy, and a large black locust. And again, those are going to come down anyway. You can see the big root problems on the bike path. On the Housing Authority property, roughly there's 12 trees. 
Some of them, one of them is dead or close to dead. Um, a couple are very small. There are two, so the, the 12 may not be an important number. There's two very nice trees mm -hmm. that, that are there. It is an urban area, and it's, we create a lot more trees with Pulaski Park, but there are two nice trees that will come down in this process. Okay. Mm -hmm. We okay. have offered, Housing Authority gets a significant award as part of this. Mm -hmm. We have offered not extra money, but to move some of the award. You can see between their parking lot and the first private piece of property, there's some land. Mm -hmm. We've offered they could use some of their award to plant new trees there if they want. That may conflict with snow clearing operations, I'm not sure. <clears throat> but it is possible to net out some trees, though. Okay. Mm -hmm. Councilor Klein. Um, so for the solar canopy, I would imagine you'd have to take some trees down as well, no? No, because when we did, when Columbia Gas dug up the parking lot, we knew someday we'd have to come back to this. So rather than restore the parking lot, Columbia Gas gave us some money, which has been sitting in a bank account. So usually when we do parking lots, we have trees between aisles. We didn't replant those trees and they're dug up. Instead, we took the money and put them in the bank. That's what's paying the awards here. That's why you don't need an appropriation. Um, but so we don't have to cut down trees for that. If we weren't expanding the parking lot, we would have to cut down some trees so we don't shade the canopy. But the same trees we cut down for the parking lot double count as the trees that shade the canopy. And another question. Um, so if it's kind of a brownfield site to some extent, there's not going to be an issue with the solar canopy with the footing to, that you have to dig deep? That's right. They have, they have two options how they do it. One is they pound them in, pound the piers in, in which case there's no displacement of soil. The other is they auger it out, and there's some amount of soil at depth that has to be disposed of that Columbia Gas pays that incremental extra cost for doing it. But <clears throat> down to 17 feet. Right. Footings don't go that deep. Right. It really, it, they, they cleaned up part of it to 17 feet. So the land that was once owned by Columbia Gas, they cleaned up to 17 feet. The land that was owned by National Grid that we acquired, they did not clear that deep. So a portion of the 17 feet and a portion is more shallow. Mm -hmm. But again, you're not dealing with a lot of soil anyway. Councilor Bart? Yes. Um, Wayne, how many more parking spaces are we going to gain out of it? So. It's complicated because a bunch of numbers. We lost about 25 spaces when we expanded Pulaski Park. This expansion will give us 55 spaces, of which we're restoring those 25. As part of our negotiation with the neighbors, because we would like more economic development, we're offering them, and you allow us to do this, we're offering them access into their, their land, and then we would lose three of those spaces. So in essence, when this all happens, we would gained 52 spaces from where we are today, which is about 27 spaces from where we were before Pulaski Park. Mm -hmm. Councilor Dwight. <clears throat> to the access point <coughs> and the development issue, <coughs> by doing this, are we providing a frontage and, and therefore that facilitates and makes an allowance for the development back of the property? So there's two things. In the property up to, let me try, point here. I'm sorry, I can't do this better. Right. Up to about this point, yeah. that's already Central Business District, and Central Business has no frontage requirement. Um, but it would need access. It would need access. They could come in off of Clark Street, uh, Clark Avenue, but it's not a good place to come because then you'd have a lot of traffic through homes. Those houses are pretty close together. Right. So that's the reason we prefer to give them access from this direction. What we've said to the three private parties is having easement make sense. It benefits us in terms of economic development, but we don't want everyone to have a separate easement. So you guys have to work together mm -hmm. that we give you one easement. One curb cut. One curb cut in mm -hmm. there. Um, and, and just so it's clear, we do intend on coming back to you to expand the central business district a little bit further south. It cuts through the middle of the property. It's a separate piece, but just mm -hmm. so you're not surprised when we come back. Mm -hmm. um, to the concerns that were expressed, I also heard concerns about the, um, the removal of of all these trees in this forested area. And of course, subsequent development would be a fait accompli as far as that goes. I mean, it's, but to the extent that the city's uh, direct involvement in tree removal, it's, it's not that much. But with the development or prospective development, I think that would be probably a significant elimination of the trees. That's correct. But remember, we have that significant tree ordinance. 
Yes. So the private parties, any tree over 20 inch DBH, diameter breast height, they would have to replace those trees. Mm -hmm. So at least we would get some mitigation for those trees. Right. But as an offset, less as a, um, I mean, the concern is uh, a nostalgic attachment to a wooded area that, that um, the constituent had known since childhood and, and had a fondness for. So, and so I can't say to him that it's going to remain virtually unchanged. So this, the, it is it is under threat, at least from his perspective. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. and, and again, to be clear, we don't have agreement. Housing Authority has raised the same issue. That's why we don't have an agreement with them yet. And so we've countered by saying we're happy to use some of this award to restore. I mean, they wouldn't be the same trees, but to plant new trees that are there. Permeability issues of uh, runoff, stuff like that. Uh, um, there's some. We, there's some of what Ty and Bond has to address. For better or worse, downtown is underlain by what's called Lake Hitchcock clay. So we don't have good, even native soil doesn't have great permeability, which in some ways is, you know, if you go from sand to asphalt, it's really hard. When you go from clay to asphalt, it's not as good. But that's, that's tying Bond's charge to figure that out. Well, it's also the concern of the fact that it is a brown, uh, a brown site in some level. Uh, the, the historical trench, we'll call it, that used to be the river, the Mill River, is that, is that a possible outlet? But, no, it's all underground because that area has been okay. filled. So, and, and groundwater moves incredibly slowly and um, uh, manufactured gas byproducts, which is what we're dealing with. Right. They move quickly the first few months while they're warm, when they were discharged, you know, 100 years ago. And once in place, they don't move very quickly. So, this conversation, a, right, yeah. a parking lot is great because it keeps it in the ground, right. but it's, you know, it's not a big deal. The parking lot's encapsulated. It's a, That's a cap site. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I'm intrigued by the possibility of new growth back there. <clears throat> it is. That, that's uh, the gift that keeps on giving, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for uh, Director Fiden while he's here? Um, then uh, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the next one is 18266 in order to reprogram Ryan Road team floor funds for the amount of $10,000 to the Jackson Street Cafeteria HVAC project. <clears throat> the City Council appropriated $75,000 as part of the FY 2018 capital plan to repair and replace the gymnasium floor at the Finn Ryan Road School. And the project is now complete and surplus funds remain. And whereas the City Council has appropriated a total of $231,595.38 for repair of the HVAC system in the Jackson Street School cafeteria via multiple orders since the initial work was determined to be more extensive. And whereas additional engineering and environmental assessments have been necessary, order that the $10,000 of remaining balance in the Ryan Road School gymnasium floor project be reprogrammed to add to the $231,590. $5.38 previously appropriated for the Northampton Public Schools Jackson Street School Cafeteria HVAC project bring the total appropriated for the repairs to $241,595.38. Do we have a motion of finance? Make a motion. Second. Second. Questions for the mayor? Pretty straightforward. It's a pretty straightforward order. So Transfer some excess funds. No questions? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> the next thing, 18227, in order to authorize Smith Vocational High School to submit um, request to MSBA for windows replacement in Building A and Building B. Order that the following resolution be adopted by the City Council. Resolve that having con convened in an open meeting on January 17, 2019, prior to the uh, SOL submission closing, the City Council of Northampton, in accordance with its charter, bylaws, and ordinances, has voted to authorize the superintendent of Smith Vocational Agricultural High School to submit to the Massachusetts School Building Authority a statement of interest uh, form dated January 11, 2019, for Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School located at 80 Locust Street, which describes and explains the following deficiencies in the priority category for which an application may be submitted to the Massachusetts School Building Authority 
in future for replacement, renovation, and modernization, modernization of school facility systems, such as roofs, windows, boilers, heating, and ventilation systems, to increase energy conservation and decrease energy related costs in the school facility. Specifically, the statement of interest form highlights the need to replace original windows in the school's A and B buildings and hereby further specifically acknowledges that by submitting this statement of interest form, the, um, the Massachusetts School Building Authority in no way guarantees the acceptance or the approval of the application, the awarding of the grant, or any other funding uh, commitment to the Massachusetts School Building Authority, or commits the city to filing an application for funding with the Mass Massachusetts School Building Authority. We have a motion in finance? Uh, move. <laughs> move positive yes. Second. Second. Okay. So this is uh, very similar to projects that you have authorized uh, for the public schools for some of the roof repair projects that we've done. Um, uh, Dr. Lincoln Hoker, who's the superintendent of Smith Vocational and Agricultural High School, is here tonight, as well as Tim Smith, who's the facilities uh, director. Um, and I would actually ask if Dr. Lincoln Hoker wanted to just come up and um, describe this project. These is something that's been on the capital uh, plan, mm -hmm. um, and so we will be working with them to facilitate the project um, and uh, get it through the. It requires city council approval because obviously it is a school, a uh, city of Northampton. Uh, school system. So that's why for both Smith Book and for NPS, uh, the vote of the council is required. <coughs> the trustees approved the resolution last night. And I will assure you, um, at Capital Improvements, Smith Book has been there for many years looking for improvements to their windows and their heating system and things. So this is a, a, a wonderful, would be a wonderful way to deal with what their needs have been for the year. So thank you, City Council, and thank you, Mayor. Uh, what I just handed out was a, uh, a very brief outline and, and draft quotes that we received for this window project. And I just want to, um, again, thank you to the mayor and the finance director. Rough estimates at this point, we're looking at a total cost of, of about $400,000. And I would anticipate that cost being on the high end. Uh, Tim Smith has done a great job getting some quotes. Some of the quotes that we received is far less than what I've included tonight. But I'd much rather show you a high end and, and, and then be pleasantly surprised when, when the, the f final numbers come in. Uh, but one of the, the agreements that we made with the city is that typically an MSBA project obviously falls in the laps of, a, of the local community. And um, as Smith spoke, we have only about 20% of our students come from the city of Northampton. So we felt it was uh, probably best suited for everybody in, uh, involved that the city of Northampton uh, holds 20, whatever the local contribution is required, the city of Northampton uh, foots the bill of 20% and the school themselves would foot, uh, foot the bill of the other 80%. So in the chart that you see, that means at the end of the day, chances are the city of, of Northampton would be looking at about $36,000, and uh, Smith Folk would be looking at about $144,000, again, on the high end. Uh, so I just wanted to, to share that. Uh, so the school is definitely on board with uh, fulfilling that need. Uh, the two buildings that we're talking about, A building is the main building where the main office is, the library, the cafeteria. It's also the shelter uh, for, for the American Red Cross. Uh, B building is where the gymnasium is and many of our vocational programs. Both, school, uh, both buildings opened up in 1976. The windows are original from 1976. Uh, there was a city study, I believe, done back in 2009 and, uh, on energy efficiency. <coughs> the outcome of that particular study was that those windows had to be replaced then. And that was back in 2009, and, and now we're 10 years later. So uh, again, thank you to the mayor. Thank you to the city council for the opportunity. But any questions specifically? Councilor Dwight. It, it, this is a comprehensive window replacement in both those buildings. Correct. Okay. So, so uh, A building, about three years ago, we did a renovation in what was the central office space, business office. That's now a new guidance suite. Those particular windows, how many? I think five were replaced then. But beyond that, yes, all the windows in A building, all the windows in B building would, would be replaced. Mm -hmm. Other double pane, triple pane? They would be double pane right now, the single pane, I believe. Yeah. Okay. If you sit in some of the vocational programs, you can feel the draft. You can feel the draft. Students have to wear coats. Sure. Yeah. Counselor? Okay. So thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we're authorizing um, submission of a specific statement of interest form that was approved on January 11th, I guess. I finished writing on January 11th. Okay. So that was the date. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead. So part of the process for the MSBA is I, I drafted the, the statement of interest. Mm -hmm. I had to then get an official vote from a school committee, in our case, obviously, the Board of Trustees. That occurred Tuesday night. Uh, the second piece is, is to get a vote from uh, the City Council. So if, uh, if the votes go through, I submit everything to the uh, MSBA. The deadline is February 15th. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so hopefully with the vote tonight, I can then submit everything by February 15th. Would you please get us a copy of that specific statement since we're sort of I, I know I already it might be in effect. This is this is the entire thing. So I'm sorry. So what you have right now is a vote that had to be that was the, the verbiage that has to be voted on. The actual statement of interest, I believe we, we emailed to the city, but we can get you a copy okay, of that. That's what I'd like to see, because we're referencing a specific document that I mean I totally trust you and the explanation I think you gave was ample, but I'd like to have it for the record. So thank you. And just so you know, the statement of interest does not talk about uh, the finances. A statement of interest simply talked about <coughs> asked us for input on the size of the building, the usage of the building, mm -hmm. capacity of the building. But we'll definitely get you that document. Appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And I'll assure you all in capital improvements. <coughs> but I do just have to say, and we'll get you the statement of interest, but we are seeking two readings right. tonight. Um, because in order to submit the application on February 15th, okay. we need to have certified copies of all the meeting minutes um, at which the votes were taken, as okay. well as um, so it's okay. Well, so then, under, understood. So then you can you can both guarantee that there's really nothing else you're seeking other than what is uh, substantially explained in this short paragraph. There may yes. be more elaboration. We will have to, this, this covers it. Yes, and when we actually okay. come to the part about money, we'll be coming back to you with another order got it. to go to proceed. This is just to like put an application no, I, in the hot. I got it. I yeah. thought it was just due diligence on our part. No to problem. Yeah, I totally it. get it. But yeah. that sounds like we're on the same page, so yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. And I'll assure you at Capital Improvements, for a number of years we've been getting requests from Smith folk for physical improvements. And this really is a preferred way to deal with it, going to, uh, going to the state and asking for their, their assistance and contribution to this. And the finance director just emailed it to uh, the executive assistant to the council. So right. Thank you. have it in your inbox. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, any other questions on this one? Uh, hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Good. Excellent. The next is 18228, an order to appropriate $39,000 from key, um, from free cash for the laser, laser fish hosting services. Whereas the city has contracted with the towns of Williamsburg, Goshen, Southampton, Chesterfield, Huntington, and West Hampton to provide laser fish hosting services for an annual fee, and the city council has annually approved such agreements. And whereas the city has received $39,000 from participating municipalities for these services and such revenue accrues to the general fund, and whereas these expenses related to the administration and operation of the services, order that the $39,000 be appropriated from the FY19 general general fund undesignated fund balance to information technologies uh, professional and technical services to provide the equivalent of the earned revenue that has come through the program to be spent with uh, <coughs> its FY19 budget towards the expenses related to the laser fish hosting. Do we have a motion to finance? Motion. Second? Second. Second. Question for the mayor. Um, so this is sort of the first year uh, that we've been involved in providing this regional service. Um, so this is revenue that has flowed into us as payments from these um, communities that are participating. Um, this will be the f only year we'll have to do this arrangement because in future years we'll actually be listing it as a revenue to the ITS department. So the funds will actually flow into the ITS uh, d department as a revenue. Um, but uh, because this is the sort of the transitional year, it flowed to our sort of free cash. And so we want to now appropriate it to the ITS uh, department. Uh, to pay for their expenses related to this project. So all we're doing is allocating funds that were given to us for this purpose, for this purpose, yeah. out of the general fund. It's a little bit, you, you did a series of these at the last meeting for the school department mm -hmm. where reimbursements came to them, but it came to the general free cash and so we, we had to send it, it to them. So uh, that's essentially what's happening and this is sort of a one-time event going forward. We'll be able to project that revenue right into the uh, ITS department budget. Any questions for the mayor on this one? Hearing none, then all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, and our last order is 18229, in order to appropriate Whiting Street funds in the amount of $25,000 for food programs. Whereas Mr. Whiting, a successful Northampton businessman, left $25,000 to the city of Northampton in his will in 1875 with instructions that the money be used for relief and comfort of the worthy poor, <clears throat> and whereas the Whiting Street Fund Committee, which was created by administrative order, 
um, issued its second annual grant application seeking proposals from local organizations with the goal of helping low-income persons in the community and with a specific focus on helping resolve food insecurity issues in our community. And whereas the Whiting Street Fund Committee received and reviewed the applications and has made its recommendations to the mayor, now order that $25,000 be appropriated from the interest in the Whiting Street Fund to the following organizations. $10,000 to the Mana Soup Kitchen for the purchase of a walk-in cooler. Mana will match the grant with $9,250 and will purchase a cooler which will give the organization safe storage for food before it is prepped for meals and will allow for the acceptance of more fresh local donated produce to be used as part of their mission of providing meals to hungry people in Northampton. Mana serves four lunches and one dinner 52 weeks a year and has worked tirelessly on behalf of those in need for 31 years. That $5,000 uh, be, be appropriated for the Northampton Survival Center to support their Fresh First program, which provides an incentive for clients to come to the center every week for fresh vegetables, fruits, and bread. The Fresh First program focuses on improving access to fresh produce, uh, collaborating with local farms and providing healthy recipes for local produce. The Northampton Survival Center is in its 40th year of operation as an emergency food pantry. $5,000 to Grow Food Northampton, Inc. to support their incentive-based food access initiatives, which will make it more convenient and affordable for low-income residents to purchase healthy foods produced by local farmers. The funding will help support SNAP, SHARE, Red Bag, Senior Share, and a new program in conjunction with the Northampton Senior Services called Farm Fresh Cooking Club, Red Bag, Family Share, and Tuesday market snap matching. $5,000 to Abundance Farm to support their Pick Your Own initiative in which food insecure residents can actively participate in the life of the farm by harvesting free organically grown fruits and vegetables. This program is conducted in collaboration with the Northampton Survival Center and funding will allow an increase in staffing to support the program and expand its outreach through transitional transition of marketing materials in other languages. Abundant Farm is located at the site of Northampton Alms House and adjoining Poor Farm which from early 18 from 1800 to 1950 served as a critical refuge for Northampton residents in need of shelter, food, and other services. Do you have a motion in finance? Make a motion. Second? Second. Questions for the mayor on this one? Sort of coming full circle, because <coughs> it used to be the Board of Almoners, right. um, mm -hmm. uh, which we uh, changed the an administrative order that you approved a couple of years ago. And I just want to say this has been a real, I think, a, a success in terms of how we've reworked this committee. Um, the fund had sort of sat there not really being very well utilized, that it was sort of on a case-by-case, -case, people who knew about the fund. And so this new uh, method that we've come up with, we've got a really great group of folks who each year uh, work with the finance director to determine how much um, they can spend from the fund. And then they put out an RFP and interview organizations. And so we're actually seeing these funds getting out into the community and, and serving uh, low and, and, and moderate income uh, folks in need, uh, and again, continuing the theme of food insecurity. Mm -hmm. um, so the request is basically to allow these $25,000 to be dispersed as described. Any questions? Uh, Councilor LaVarge. Yes, um, Mayor, I really have to say I think it is great that we have taken this Whiting Street Trust Fund in a direction where it should actually go. And I'm very pleased about this because before we never saw anything like this with the Whiting um, Trust Fund at all, with the avenues on it. And everything was either somebody could go ahead if they had difficulties, electricity bill or whatever. We're looking at the needy people here throughout the whole city. And I'm really happy about this direction. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, I think we'll all agree it's a more organized and inclusive approach to the distribution of these funds. Counselor? Um, I agree. This is very well organized. But um, can you remind me, is, have we settled on a theme of food insecurity always, or is, this a, or is it a rotating theme? In this? I think they will be working on that each year. I okay. think that, that last year, and maybe you could speak to this, uh, yeah. uh, um, Director Wright was uh, helping the committee this year. She can maybe talk about why they decided they wanted to do it again. Yeah, I think um, they just, they, they had a long conversation about what they thought were the most basic needs, and food and shelter kind of came to the top. 
And I think they felt that because we had only 25,000 that, you know, focusing on food was probably, um, you know, primary. Now they did that last year, which was the first year they did it again. There's next year they may decide to go in another direction. Because we don't want, because this is a small amount of money, we don't want these agencies to become so dependent on it. Right. Um, and so I suspect in the future they may, they may look at shelter next as, as a, but they really want to keep it on the basic needs because that was the, the goal of the, um, the donor initially when he gave the money was that it helped the needy poor of Northampton. Mm -hmm. So um, food and shelter seem to be the first things everybody thought about. That certainly makes sense. Um, Councilor Labarge and I can, I think we said this last time too, we can certainly, in terms of manna, we can say that they are remarkable at doing so much with so little and so this is a huge gift for them and because they <clears throat> um, they always ask for so little and are remarkable in their use so this is right. I'm sure overwhelmingly wonderful for them right doing it this way the twenty five thousand dollars definitely benefits a lot more people than the old way which was just mm -hmm. you know random <clears throat> so mm -hmm. any other oh, counselor and just to refresh my memory the, the reason why this is legal to do is because we consider it a, a service in a sense, to the people of the city, right? We're not just giving private organizations money. It's for a specific cause, <coughs> and it's that which makes it allowable. Well, it's actually, uh, we're following um, actually a probated will. Uh, so Whiting Street so left the city. Around, uh, yeah, the Whiting okay. Street left us these funds, to do um, left funds to cities and towns up and down the valley. And right. specifically, it had to go to uh, residents of the right. city who were the worthy poor. Interestingly, they couldn't be residents of the almshouse, um, but anyone else in the city. They, they so were worthy. So yeah, we're basically carrying it's like out it's of not general day. revenue. It's it's no, that money carried no, it's over. A, it's and a trust that was given to the yeah. city. It's been it's in a separate trust fund, and um, and we're just trying to manage it prudently. So when they decide how much they want to. Yeah take out each year we're trying to keep in mind that we want it to be oh, that part is good yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's that's the legal um, yeah. reason that we're able to do this excellent great mm -hmm. thank you no and I oh counselor uh, I assume there's 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 some form of request for proposal that, that goes out rough roughly what time of year um, um, uh, the, proposals, the proposals are sent out in um, uh, November and they're due in December it's a fairly small short application we didn't want to overly right. burden any of these social service agencies right. so um, and then what they do is they write a report how they spent the money and they come make a presentation in September so this committee basically starts meeting in September they met with the prior last year's applicants heard what they did decided what they wanted to do we revamped the application sent it out in November it's due in December they meet in January they reviewed the applications, made the um, recommendation to the mayor for the awards. And this year, what they want to do um, is make site visits to the four entities, probably late in the summer, just to get familiar with what they've been doing. And those site visits will take place of having those entities come back and give their report. Mm -hmm. Great. So that's the plan. Very impressive. Thank you. Other questions? No, I appreciate the fact they're going with well-known, established entities you know, that already have their infrastructure in place, so this money would freely flow through to the people that benefit from the services rather than organizational things. It goes right to, to the need. All right, so um, with no further questions, all in favor of a positive recommendation in finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Does anyone know of any new business? Hearing to none, adjourn. a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We're back to the full city council meeting and we'll deal with a number of these financial orders now. The first is 18224 in order to appropriate $10,000 for emergency demolition at 45 Carolyn Ooh, Street. Cool. Please. Seconded. Seconded. Seconded by Councilor Barge. Any discussion on this before council? Uh, we had Councilor Dwight and then Councilor Labarge. So if there's no discussion on the important to do, common sense thing must be done. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Suspend the rule. Second. Okay. In discussion on suspension of rules, 
All those in favor of spending the rules to allow for second reading, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Move second reading, please. Second. Seconded by Councilor LaBarge. Any discussion on second reading? Roll call. Yes. 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 Okay. Proven in second reading. Next is 18.225 in order to authorize roundhouse parking lot fee and easement acquisition and sale. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Discussion on this. Uh, here's a substantial amount in the finance committee meeting. I, I actually really like the plan, so I'm glad we're I'm glad we're doing this. Um, roll call, please. Council White. We're trying. Yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> Yes. 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 Okay. For first reading. Next is 18226. In order to reprogram Ryan Road uh, Gym Floor, $10,000 to Jackson Street Cafeteria, HVAC. Oh, cool. Made and seconded. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Approved in first reading. Next is 18227, an order to authorize Smith, um, Smith Vocational High School to submit a s statement of interest to the Massachusetts School Building Authority for windows in A and B buildings. Move to approve. Second. Seconded by Councilor Dwight. Any discussion on this? Oh. Yes. 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 Move to suspend the rule. Second. Okay. Approved in first reading and motion to suspend the rules. Any discussion on suspension of rules? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any abstentions? Any, well, any no's? Any abstentions? Everyone wants to suspend the rules. Very good. So now I hear a motion to. <laughs> motion and second, second reading, reading, please. Second by Councilor Klein. Any discussion on second reading? Then roll call. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Sheriff. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Okay, that's approved on second reading. Uh, next is 18.228 in order to appropriate $39,000 from free cash to um, ITS department for laser fish hosting service. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Discussion on this. Move a roll call on this, please. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 first reading and the final financial order is 18229 in order to appropriate Whiting uh, Street Fund $25,000 for food programs. Okay. It's made and seconded. Further discussion on this? Hearing none. Roll call. Yes. 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 That's approved on first reading. Now we have an ordinance that must be referred according to the council rules, and that is 18231, ordinance relative to large scale ground mounted solar arrays. So here a motion to refer. Uh, move to refer to a joint. Uh, meeting of the planning board in the in the legislative matters. Okay, um, and Councilor Barge, I hear you second that. Yes. Okay, <coughs> both legislative matters and the planning board. Um, nowhere else. Okay. Any discussion on the referral? All those in favor of the referral, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that's approved. Now we have three ordinances to actually debate and possibly vote on. The first is. 18.204, an ordinance to amend the definition of accessory structures. Motion to approve this, please, to get on the floor. So moved. Second. Second. Seconded by. Um, okay. <laughs> so now, who among us will be the person to describe it? Well, um, I, well I can speak to this uh, to, to the extent that I can speak to it. Anyway, uh, uh, Carolyn Mish is not able to attend tonight. and. But as you can see, the, the only modification of the original language is the word bathing added to um, the limitations of, of uh, uh, an accessory unit that's not a dwelling unit. And um, the, as I understand it, the request came essentially from the building commissioner whose concern was 
that uh, someone building a studio who in installed bathing facilities was it was painfully close to actually being uh, a habitable space and thereby disqualified at least under the under this context there are different terms and different rules for an auxiliary dwelling unit or accessory dwelling unit um, some of the debate in legislative matters was of course the the definition and parameters of a bathing system but he, 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 uh, in consultation with the city solicitor the 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 squishiness of the language is is probably easier to accept than more specificity of uh, that would be required to say things like bidets or something like that so um there are qualifying circumstances someone has a workshop they may would have to apply for variance for something like an emergency shower that uh, or, or an eye wash station those are different bathing systems so but as such it passed uh legislative matters uh, unanimously uh in the affirmative okay. thank you um any other questions from the council and so it sounds like is this has this been a problem that the building commissioner has encountered he, he, from what i understand it, it was difficult for him yes because he didn't have any specific language he could refer to in the in the existing ordinance yeah, i think the Council ordinance Mark. prohibited kitchen facilities right but bathing facilities are more complex so people would put in bathing facilities which weren't prohibited mm -hmm. and then throw in a quick kitchen later right and the proximity of these things to property boundaries you can have a workshop exactly. like four feet from your neighbor but you can't have a residence four feet from your neighbor and people were putting in workshops with bathing facilities and then throwing in a kitchen later so it really helps him weed out correct the setback the setback yeah. requirements are much yeah, more lenient for for, uh, for yeah. these structures so currently now uh, currently the language reads no sleeping or kitchen facilities mm -hmm. and this is simply adding no bathing okay. facilities and I guess a debate about whether or not you should be able to have an actual dwelling four feet from your neighbor might be a worthy debate, but has to be That's done right. in a exactly. separate. Uh, and it's not one that we should leave in the building commissioner's okay. hands to try and litigate. That's up to us. Okay. So thank you. That explains it. And you, you <laughs> read it into the record as well. So unless there's any other right. discussion on this, it's on the floor for first reading. Uh, we have a roll call, please. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Goodwell. Yes. 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 Okay. Um, next is 18222, an ordinance relative to taxis and livery vehicles for hire. It's a motion to approve this. So moved. No one offered to table it indefinitely out of frustration with the number <laughs> no, of no. Could we? No. I'm afraid, well. We're almost there. We are so close. It's just. <laughs> We're getting good at it, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I liken this to there was a legislative surgery, and then we realized we left the watch inside the yeah, patient. Yeah, that's exactly what. <laughs> just a, just a time exit. All right. So let's see. Um, this was referred, this came from the Transportation Parking Commission. Mm -hmm. I'll describe it in general terms first because it's a long ordinance. But basically for the, the public, the city licenses taxi cabs. And this is about how we do so and, and who requires the license and what they can do and so on. So this started at the Transportation Parking Commission. It was approved by the Transportation Parking Commission. Is that This new language, yes. Okay. So it, because Legislative Matters looked at it as well, and amended it, and right. TPC concurred. We so and it and we did we amended it um, because there was some ambiguity built in, such as um, who <laughs> essentially this is requiring um, businesses registered in Northampton who have taxis and livery systems that they are required to meet the criteria of the license, whereas the concern was. Um, uh, businesses located outside Northampton in the course of the discussion we realized that uh, absent the language that specified <coughs> if you were a business outside of Northampton dropping off somebody in Northampton is perfectly fine picking someone else up in Northampton thereby gave them a distinct advantage over Northampton-based businesses who actually have to abide by stricter code. 
So we were trying to embed in the language that outside cab systems had to abide by it if they were to do Northampton pickup. Um, not drop-offs, however. Drop-offs can come from anywhere. So for instance, if you got a livery system from Windsor Locks or uh, Bradley Airport, it could drop you off here, didn't have to leave you at the border, and then somebody else come pick you up. <laughs> In the, in the process of doing that, we, we committed we, So we amended that language thinking we were, we were all very smug and think we really you had a mic drop moment and we were done. Then, thank goodness for Laura. Laura actually read further because she had recalled uh, somewhere in there, there was language already somewhat to that effect. And she discovered it, and it subsequently made the things that we said or that we amended uh, be confusing and, in fact, actually contradictory in some level. Mm -hmm. So in in the interim, there have been conversations with the city solicitor who's made some other recommendations to be amended tonight here on the floor. So if any of that makes sense. I, it does, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's see. And, and thank you to Laura, our, our counsel as administrative assistant, for flagging this and then working with the solicitor to propose a right. solution. So, Councilor, you had something? Um, Thanks for that, exp that explanation. Did it cleared up? Well, no, I'm, I'm just giddy with excitement that I, <laughs> it wasn't me doing it. Um, right, I'm sure you're very happy. So just to clear, so the city solicitor had come up with amendments. So these are amendments to his amendments? We he amended, amended on the, his, we amended in legislative matters is where we're. What he had amended previously. He was right. there. He was there, but <laughs> oh, okay. he, 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 helped made, the he made a recommendation to the amendment, but we had okay. noticed in the course of the discussion that, that actually there was no clear language, at least that we could see, that made a distinction between Northampton-based companies and outside companies. Okay, so just I just want everyone to know that um, he was, we worked with him. We didn't just come up with these amendments. That right, right. He, uh, we actually worked with the solicitor to come up with this set that is then got amended again at Legislative Matters, which and is fine. I just wanted to be again. clear that. Yes, yes. amended it again yet. And who knows? We're not the only ones messing around in here. No. So um, Legislative Matters amended this, and of course the solicitor reviewed those amendments as he does for everything that goes to that committee. And then today, basically, or yesterday, it was discovered that this needs a little bit more tweaking. To, um, okay. um, all right. So let's see. Um, is there any? There's no desire for me to read this entire ordinance. Um, is there? No. Um, Are you reading? <laughs> Please do. All right. No. I think I think the explanation was sufficient, and it's going to be in in the minutes and the record. Um, but I would like to have a motion to adopt. The amendment that came today. Um, I would like. I would, okay. I would with that amendment. Um, <coughs> and, and currently, so the amendment would yeah. read. And this is under um, page six. Under, first, the first amendment comes up under section one under delivery vehicles category. Um, item A under thirty six dash seventeen business owners permit. But that's not the amendment we're moving now. No, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, that is the the. But that's the recommended. Uh, it also includes the original recommendation for amendment, right? No. It takes. So which words are going to require us to vote on that, right? Well, let's see. So the entire section, two sections are coming to us. Right. We haven't yet yeah. Um, the version that we're the right. That's what I'm saying. There are two well, <coughs> here's 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 what we have to. Here's the process. So we are going to vote on an amendment that. Laura Krutzler and the solicitor have proposed today to the matter that came from legislative matters. And once that is amended, we will vote. So you want me to do the, the most recent Start amendments? The smallest of the Russian dolls. In that. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, towards the bottom under operation marking and metering of cabs, you'll see um, if you have it on, a, as a, as, uh, on your computer, it's in blue. Uh, you'll see it as uh, strike and additions on uh, um, in subsection C, I mean section C, under item uh, number four, and it reads it will now read hopefully any taxi cab and then adding company that is permitted in another community, strike and add that does not operate a permitted taxi cab business within the city limits may drop off fares in Northampton, strike from and add to that picked up in another community, and then also striking and may pick up fares in Northampton and drop them in another community 
also continuing strike, however, and strike and add <laughs> such taxi cab companies that are not permitted through the city of Northampton add also in accordance with uh, 36-17A above and then now may pick up, <laughs> strike, and drop off the same. So may not pick up passengers, adding S at the uh, end to plural it, within the city limits. And striking the final sentence, which is further taxi cap, further taxi cap companies not permitted through the city of Northampton may transport only passengers that are hired on a prearranged basis and may not pick up hailed fares in the city. <laughs> Good, excellent. Does okay. it make any sense? Is that, yes, it does. Is that, yes, okay. it, it conforms does. to your description. Okay, and that and that w I would propose that amendment. Okay, and I believe it was made and seconded already. Or do we need a second to that? Yes. Well, seconded by I did. Councillor Labarge. Okay, so very good. So it's been described and is on the floor. Any further discussion of the amendment? If not, uh, all those in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So the amendment is adopted. Now we're back to the amended proposal. The original amended proposal. Yeah. Do you want me to take it from there? Um, or we, are you comfortable with the language that sits before you? Well, so you've, you've read the final part that's being changed. Right. Um, there is an additional. <laughs> yeah, would you in, in the beginning paragraph, yep. actually, that was part of that amendment. Yep. I'm sorry, I forgot it. It's. Um, under uh, 36, uh, 316-17A, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you'll notice there is to pick up fares in Northampton was also should have been part of that. Uh. Is that okay? Oh, is that right that on this? Actually, isn't part of. Uh, that was the that was the original. Okay, I'm only seeing it in blue, so that's what confused me. I'm sorry. So yeah, all right. So that will be back to the original that. amendment okay. that came out of legislative matters. Okay. So do you need a motion of the? Oh, we have a motion some, that was amended by. No, we have no. the we have the motion. Is all the motions you need? On the amendment. No, because remember I made a joke about how I thought I'm we should so table sorry. it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I wish I was serious. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we have it on the floor. We got one. We don't need another one. Yeah. So we're good. <laughs> we're at the last Russian doll, um, the the outer layer. So. Um, do you feel any other need to explain any more about this ordinance? What is going to happen is after it comes out of the second reading, it will all be a clean version and we'll exactly. be able to vote on it for second reading exactly. right. if there's any confusion. I mean, exactly. it, is, it is a complicated ordinance, okay? So we could read six pages of it, but I think it's sufficient um, to communicate as we have. And anyone else who wants to read it may do so. so. God bless them. Did we say that this as amended by legislative matters? When it was it's, it's taken for granted since legislative matters can amend proposals and the stuff that comes back from legislative matters is as amended by it. Okay. okay? And if that's not clear, we've just all gotten the same page about it now. So so good. So as amended, any further clarifications? No, this is fine. We have to explain it carefully yes. before we vote on it. So that's a good thing. Um, and actually, this is a hard issue, as others have noted, we've been working on for uh, and uh, yes. Councilor Shara and and uh, Councilor Nash on the Transportation Park Commission for a while. So yes. good, we're moving towards getting it right. Um, any other discussion on the ordinance now as amended? Okay. Then if not, I'd ask for a roll call on first reading. Okay. Um, Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 Councilor Donald. Yes. And yes. Yes. Yeah. First reading. Uh, well done. So now we have a substantially shorter one, 18223. No. This is an ordinance <laughs> building parking <laughs> in Street. Well, shorter in the text anyway. Um, <laughs> this simply says that um, it looks like we are adding on, lo on Pleasant Street on the southwesterly side um, a uh, handicapped parking space, which would be the first space southeasterly of, King, of Kingsley Avenue on Pleasant Street. So, motion to approve this? For uh, motion for purpose of discussion. Motion okay. to approve. Great. And seconded by? Second. Councilor Bidwell. So, discuss, yeah. So, uh, again, this came to legislative matters. You'll notice that it, came, it was referred back with a negative recommendation, a unanimous uh, negative recommendation. The reason being uh, the, the Chair of Transportation and Parking came to represent the endorsement of DPC. And then the ward councilor actually objected to this. The, you'll note that they're both the same person. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and, and, 
Yeah. But um, the concerns, <laughs> at the and I'll, consistency I'll, is the hot. Well, <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> but in the process, Councillor Nash had spoken with a number of abutters, uh, and felt there were a number of concerns and felt that this could go back, be referred and reconfigure, redesign something that might work to everyone's satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And uh, the legislative matters seem having no problem with that, but thought probably the cleanest way is to bring it to here, kill it on the floor, summarily kill it on the floor, okay. and then let them start over. Sounds, sounds, sounds good to me. Anyone like to add anything else about the impending death of this ordinance? Or? Death by count. Well, I, I just want to say I feel bad. <laughs> Because it looks like oh, it's I'm too late for that. Day, you know, a handicapped parking space. No, no. In fact, no. I, you know, I'm more concerned about the location. The proposed location is in front of a business on on um, Pleasant Street. That um, Millennium Package Store. It has one parking space in front, mm -hmm. um, and the on a stretch of like 90 feet of street where there's only two parking spaces. So um, it would be. A hardship for that um, that business. Also, I, I, there's a backstory as to how we got here, and I'm not quite sure. It has something to do with Roberto's had a a handicapped parking space on their private property, yeah. but they closed that mm. to expand their their dining area, and that triggered this event mm. that we had to find a handicapped parking space, and that. Um, and that we also have um, that we um, DPW works to avoid having handicapped parking spaces near um, uh, raised crosswalks. Mm -hmm. But I've gone out there, and, and this is where I want to bring it back to DPW and really look at the area in a little more detail because mm -hmm. I actually think the slope up to the crosswalk mm -hmm. is is more compliant to ADA than the curb cuts. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so anyway, and, and also both, both businesses support another location mm -hmm. directly north of Kingsley. So I, I think there, there could be a resolution. I will commit to having something will come back here mm -hmm. and it might even be this exact same mm -hmm. um, uh, proposal. But uh, my hope is that we we can go back and okay. work on this and come up with something that works for everybody. Okay. Well, well, thank you, Councillor, for that explanation. So in light of that, one possibly less draconian action the council could take would simply be to refer it back to transportation and parking. And if in the, your process you wish to amend it and move the space, you could use this vehicle if you wish to do that. Yeah, send it back to transportation. So that's the other option. Um, think about that, Council Chair. Um, I would prefer that option. Okay. I'll just say we had a pretty right. significant conversation in transportation and parking. And um, the reason that Councilor Nash stated for why the spot wasn't at the other place, um, the DPW has already looked at that location and mm -hmm. said it wasn't uh, a good location for that spot, which is why this spot was chosen. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to vote, I'm just going to say that I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to vote for this again because I voted it for it the first time, and I think it's a good place for this space. I've talked to um, people who live in that neighborhood who use handicap parking, and they felt like that would be a good spot. Um, so if we're going to vote, I'm voting for it. You all may do what you like, of course. Um, but I, I like your idea of referring it back. I'm happy to have this conversation in TPC again. Okay. Do you want to make that motion to refer it TPC? Is that okay? That sounds great. Okay. So I hear a first and a second. Second. Okay. Good. Any discussion on referral? All those in favor of referral, please say aye. 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 Extensions. Great. That's great. Um, very good. Now let's see. Wait a minute. That's it. The party's over. So no new Yay. business this evening? Move to adjourn. Seconded by? Second. Any opposed adjournment? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Good night.